Hello everyone. You are or welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna talk about boiler water indicators which can be found on ships or other industrial plants now I will discuss the requirements for boiler water level indicators so this is one of my topic for my students so I will discuss also the related information regarding the boiler water level level indicators so not just the requirements but the important information also should be discussed in this topic Now, I will start with the various types of local boiler, boiler water indicators. So, these are the various types of local boiler water indicator here this is tub tubular type water liquid level gauge or indicator and this is reflection type water level gauge and this one is transparent type water level gauge indicator and this one by color type water level indicator and this one multi by color type level indicator so the description is just covered by my by my camera so this one is used only for small boiler as well as this one so when I was on board ship I didn't see this type of boiler water indicator because our boiler there is big big boiler and it is used for the machinery this one probably are used for boiler to supply hot water showers so accommodation showers so we are using this type of boiler water indicator on ships and this one also and this one but it is common that this transparent type is being used 
in the boiler on board ship. So these are the various types of local boiler water indicators. Now I will proceed to the requirements for boiler water indicators on steam boilers on ships. So this is our main topic. Here, two local boil, boiler water indicators are required in each boiler, either port and starboard or forward and up. So, this is port and starboard. This port and starboard, the port, the port side is the left side of the ship and the starboard is the right side of the ship or forward forward is the forward of the ship and up is the after meaning astern or at the back side of the ship and this one is the front side of the ship so forward is front and up is back. So depending on maker's installation. So this local boiler water indicators, in other words, this is called direct reading. Because you can directly visualize or see the water level of your boiler at the boiler side itself meaning it is directly attached to the boiler itself or to the boiler body or the boiler uh, outside of the boiler drum or boiler shield The second, at least one remote boiler water indicator located in engine control room or ECR, engine control room. So, this is also, or, or this is called indirect reading because you read the label of the water level of your boiler in a remote position which is engine control room or probably this also installed outside engine control room but not near in the boiler so let us talk about the function of boiler water indicator it indicates the water level inside the boiler diesel it shows the level in the boiler drum so here is the illustration so this is your water uh, this is your uh, boiler water bo sorry boiler water and this is your boiler drum so I just only show the part of this uh, boiler for the purpose of illustrating this 
uh, function of boiler water indicator. Now, if you open this water cup or valve, as well as this steam cup or steam valve, And the drain cap should be closed. So the function of this, this is called boiler gauge class or boiler water indicator. So if you open, so this is in this position, this is normally uh, closed. But here in this illustration, this is open. But common, uh, it is common that if this is open, this is aligned. This lever is aligned to the pipe or to the plants. But here now, this is across to the pipe. So look at this. This is open now. Open. The water level is flowing towards the side glass and here indicating the actual label of your water label of your boiler. So, as you can see here. And here, the steam cap, this is now in open position. So, here is the steam drum, steam space. You can see also the label of the steam here. So, this is the label of the steam in white or in a, in a transparent co transparent color so this two label will be equalized depending on the condition so if this water label will go down to low level this also in the indication also will go down to low level And the uh, steam label, you can see here, is also uh, filling up here, the steam. So, transparent color. So, this is the function of boiler water indicator. It indicates the, what the actual water level inside the boiler B cell. So, this is boiler B cell or stain drum. And it shows the label in the boiler drum. So, as you can see here, the label, because this one, you cannot see inside this one. This is a uh, closed B cell. This is enclosed B cell. So, you can see the label by means of your boiler water indicator. So, in terms of Construction. The construction of local boiler water indicators. Normally, two water level indicators are fitted into the boiler. So, that is the requirements. These are also fitted at the front inside of the boiler so either the front or the end and as i said earlier it is also fitted and uh, this one is front inside of every, every wheeler so normally the requirements is uh, basically in the forward and up or front of the bezel or front side of the boiler and the, the back side of the boiler or forward and up or usually in the port and starboard which is left and right side of the, of the bezel Water level indicators consist of three cup as steam cup, 
water cock, drain cock, and glass tube. The steam cock connect or disconnect the glass tube with steam space. The water cock connect or disconnect the glass glass tube with a water in the boiler. The drain cock is used to drain out the water in in from glass tube at interval to ensure that the steam and water cock are clear in operation. The glass tube protected by means of a cover which is so the description here is well, look at this one which is especially made So, I will show to you one by one where is this steam cock, water cock, green cock, glass tube, and the uses of this part or this component. So first, we will, or I will discuss first the working principle. The working principle, when the steam cock and water cock open, steam rushes from upper passage and water rush from lower from lower from passage to the glass tube so first i will uh, show to you as i said before the location of the different components so this is the steam cock or steam bulb, water cock or water bulb, drain cock or drain bulb, protector shield, this one here, the protector of the, the glass and the glass. So uh, these are the location. Now, here in the first description, when steam cock and water cock open, so steam cock, this is open now. Water cock, this is open now. The steam rushes from upper passage here. So the steam here will rush towards here and will be visible in a transparent, transparent uh, almost transparent color here. So this is the steam level. And what they rush from lower, from passage to the glass tube. So, the water also entering here or rush and flowing here upward to indicate the actual water level of your boiler. So, that is the working principle. This will indicate the level of water in the boiler. The two bowl are places at the, the junction of the metal tube. So the, the, the two bowl described here is not uh, shown, but 
it is located at the junction of the metal shop. So, it is here. It is supposedly here. Here. So, in case of a breakage of this uh, glass tube or the, the glass indicator uh, the describe here the bowl or this will serve as uh, non-return or the check bulb will uh, close here so that uh, the leakage of the glass here will not continue. So the same also here. So that is the purpose of the bowl. Under normal operating condition, the bowl are kept. Pole line circle in case of the glass job is broken, the stem will rise from the upper passage and water from the lower passage due to the pressure difference between the, bo the boiler pressure at the atmospheric pressure. The bowl are carrier along the passage to the glass to an of glass and tube and then close passage. So the, the purpose of the bowl is to close the passage here. In, here for the water and here for the steam in case of breakage of the glass or the boiler gauge glass. Next, so I will also explain the maintenance of boiler gauge glass. So there, uh, there is a maintenance of this uh, component. First bullet, gauge glass blow down, so that is one maintenance, blow down throw of gauge glass, cleaning of water side of gauge glass, cleaning of steam side of gauge glass. So those are the maintenance of boiler gauge glass. So. This is the boiler gauge glass. This one is the boiler gauge glass. So, the marine engineers should maintain this one in order to indicate a correct label of both water label and stem label of the boiler so this is very important because the consequence of loss of water level is especially when your boiler is continuous firing as well as your economizer or the exhaust gas boiler is continuous in service and there is no water the boiler tubes will be melted and depending on how much the damage it is almost totally damaged then your ship will be stop running or stop in operation because you have no heating anymore for your fuel oil use on board. So this is a small component but a big impact to your boiler operation as well as in general to your ship operation. So this is very important to maintain in order to work in a good working condition
So I will show you or let us take a look the uh, blow down procedure as part of the maintenance of the boiler gauge class. So I will show you this video and please watch this video because this is a part of the of the discussion for the maintenance of the boiler gauge class. So it takes time to open this video. So we just wait. I'll click open. Proper maintenance of water level instruments on a boiler is crucial to keeping your plant running safely and efficiently at all times. We're going to demonstrate how to conduct a proper blowdown procedure on a boiler water gauge class and a remote level indicator. But first, let's understand the purpose of these vital level indicating instruments. The water gauge glass on a boiler enables the operator to visually observe and verify the actual water level in the boiler. However, if not properly cleaned and maintained, a gauge glass can seem to show that there is sufficient water when the boiler is actually operating in a low or low water condition. Lack of maintenance may result in a stain or a coating on the inside of the gauge glass where it is in contact with the boiler water and give the appearance of an incorrect level indication, especially if the drum level happens to be outside the range of the level instrument. Be sure that all plant procedures have been followed, and the control room operator is aware that a blowdown of the level instrument is about to take place. This will prevent any false trip of the boiler or unexpected drop with level indication for the primary control operator. Before conducting this procedure, Inspect the installation. If any leakage is observed around the instrument or isolation valves, determine the source of the leak and make the repair. Then proceed with this blowdown procedure. The importance of proper cleaning and maintenance of the water column and the water gauge glass or level indicator cannot be stressed enough. The water column and connecting piping must be kept clean to ensure the water level in the gauge glass accurately represents the water level in the boiler. The frequency and method used to blow down a level instrument may affect service life and performance of the water column, gauge glass, or level indicator. At a minimum, we suggest weekly blowdowns on gauge glasses and monthly blowdowns for level indicators with a maximum duration of 20 seconds. Excessive duration of blowdown time will shorten the life of the gauge glass or level indicator. However, plant rules will determine the actual frequency required. The user may also consider the quality of their boiler water as an influencing factor to determine the blowdown frequency. Furthermore, operators must consider proper blowdown procedures in order to keep the connecting water piping clean even if the glass or level sensors remain clean for extended operational periods. Simply opening and closing the drain valve on a level instrument to conduct a blowdown will not ensure that water is flowing freely from the boiler drum through the water piping to the level instrument. However, by conducting the blowdown in this manner, the water that is in the instrument will drop and go out the drain but there is no assurance the water leg piping between the boiler drum and the level instrument has been flushed. This is because the steam and water are both flowing from the outlet of the open drain. 
By following this procedure, the operator will ensure that steam and water both flow freely in this piping by testing them independently. The intent of this part of the procedure is to remove any debris or sediment from the water leg piping. While the risk of developing a blockage in the steam piping is very low, the risk for sediment buildup in the water piping is much greater over time. After following the blowdown procedure for a gauge glass or remote level indicator, the operator can be assured the steam and water connecting piping will be thoroughly flushed. We will now describe the recommended procedure for blowing down water level indicating instruments on a power boiler that's been constructed to meet the requirements of the ASME boiler and pressure vessel code. Please note, isolation valves between the drum and the water column, number one and number three, are optional by code. However, if they are installed, they must be locked open under normal operating conditions. The drain valve number five on the water column is required by code. Using this drain valve alone is not a sufficient method to flush all the steam and water piping. This valve will remain closed during the following procedure. To begin the blowdown procedure, close the steam valves number one and number two. Next, with water valves number three and number four in the open position, open the drain valve number six and the water will discharge. Water will be flashing due to the elevated temperature. This discharge from the water leg piping should be observed flowing out of the drain. The drain must be routed to a safe location away from the operator. The drain piping may be routed to a condensate tank or a location away from the instrument, which may require a second individual in order to validate the flow. After 20 seconds, Close the water valves number three and number four. Then open the steam valves number one and number two, leaving the drain valve number six open. Steam will flow through the gauge glass and the drain valve outlet. After an additional 20 seconds, close the drain valve number six and open the water valves number three and number four. The blowdown procedure for a gauge glass configuration has been completed and the indicated water level should promptly return. If the water level does not promptly return to normal, the connecting piping may be partially clogged and need to be physically cleaned. To begin the blowdown procedure for a power boiler configured with a remote level indicator, first, close the steam valve number one. Next, with water valve number two in the open position, open drain valve number three, and the water will discharge. After 20 seconds, close the water valve number two. Then open steam valve number one, and steam will blow through the remote level indicator and the drain valve outlet. After an additional 20 seconds, close the drain valve number three, and open the water valve number two. The blowdown procedure for a remote level indicator has been completed and the indicated water level should promptly return. If the water level does not promptly return to normal, the connecting piping may be partially clogged and need to be physically cleaned. <coughs> Finally, as an important safety tip, operate all of these valves slowly. This enables the operator to carefully observe the valves and instrument while conducting this procedure. So, I just show you the video explaining on how to blow down the gauge glass or the boiler water indicator. So, as a review, I will manually explain. The boiler gauge glass cleaning and blowdown procedure. 
So, here in the first bullet, close the steam and water side valves. So, this is the steam valves and this is the water side valves. You have or you have to close both this, this valve. Open the drain valve. So, we have to open this drain valve. So, by opening this drain valve, you have to, because this is now in a closed position, but normally the valve uh, or the valve uh, usually design that in this position is closed. But here in this illustration, this is, this is open. So, this is just uh, uh, a few design, but normally in it, it is in open position, this is in line with the pipe. But now here I would uh, emphasize that this is in open position in this illustration. So blow through the steam side by opening the steam bulb then close. So this is already open and this is close. So you have to open this one. Open and close again. Blow through water side by opening the water bulb, then close. So open this for 20 seconds and close. So the same with this one. This one. So remember, every time you open this bulb, because your drain bulb is in open position, the water will, uh, will be drained here. And also the stem, when you open the stem, for the purpose to clear the, the pipe or the bulbs or blockage or to check if this is uh, plugging. Now close the drain bulb. So you have to close this drain bulb again. Open the water bulb. Open the water bulb again. Open the stem bulb. Open the stem bulb again. So, those are the procedure on how to, to clean and blow down the boiler water indicator or boiler gauge class. So, here, this thing of local boiler water indicator this is local because this is directly uh, pitted to the boiler delete this thing of the control is required by which can be by simulation so you can simulate this one so with this with this uh, procedure given here or with a weekly test by interrupting the feed water pump and lowering the water level by evaporation. So I will show you because uh, this one I already show you on how to test by simulation. So I will show you a weekly test by interrupting the feed water pump and lowering water by evaporation. So here we have a, a component here or a part of a boiler. So these are a part of a boiler uh, concerning with this uh, procedure on how to test the boiler gauge glass here. The pump interrupt switch for testing local boiler, local boiler low water level. So here is your boiler, and here, here is your uh, boiler water indicator, and here is your pump interrupt switch. So on board the ship, you can also use. Uh, Directly the 
post button switch or the feed pump to stop and to start but here this is equipped with pump interrupt switch so in this explanation low water level test with the burner firing so your burner should be firing so the burner is the one that will burn the air and fuel to create fire inside your combustion chamber of your boiler to heat this uh, boiler water. So, this is the burner. So, it is not shown here because we have to uh, show only the procedure on how to test the water level by the use of interrupt switch. First, switch the pump interrupt switch to the pump interrupt position. So, this switch you have to put in the interrupt position. So, you have to put here. Yeah, you have to switch here in this position. By evaporation, so the evaporation meaning you have to uh, continuous fire your boiler to uh, evaporate steam or to generate steam then by evaporation lower the water level in the boiler until the low water alarm sounds the low water sounds so you have to continue continuously uh, fire your boiler to evaporate continuously at the same time your boiler water will going to low level until such time the low water alarms sounds so there's an alarm uh, equipped with this uh, machine or auxiliary machine the low water reset switch illuminates and the burner shuts down so there is a, a safety of the boiler which so this uh, illuminates this is the indicator of the alarm and followed by the burner shut down for the for safety reasons your burner will shut down again switch the pump interrupt switch to the pump on position so you have to switch on this one again the pump will start and restore so the pump the pump is or the pit pump is used to to fill up or to transfer the pit water to the boiler to fill up the boiler with water fill up again the pump will start and restore the water level to the normal position and switch off so you have to switch on and if this is already normal position you have to switch off again to interrupt. After approximately 17 seconds from restoring the low water level, the low water relay can be reset. So in the electrical control, the low water level relay. So this relay will energize the circuit. So this will be reset. So, reset into a uh, uh, normal condition. To cancel the low water level alarm and light. So, the alarm and light, you have to cancel. Depress the button. So, there is a button. You have to press or depress the low water reset switch. The burner will start, uh, will start again. So, uh, these are the procedure on how to test uh, your boiler uh, water indicator but be sure when you are doing you have to observe if this one will go down this level or not otherwise if this one will remain in the same position there is a plug or this pipe is uh, plug up and you have to 
physically remove the clog. So you have to dismantle this pipe and declog this this pipe. So those are the the procedure on how to test. Next, we will proceed to the remote water level indicators. So by the way, the local boiler water indicator is direct reading and the remote boiler water indicator is indirect reading. So here, remote water level indicators are such as a differential pressure, water level sensor, probe level sensor are provided to indicate the current level in the drum at a remote position such as in the engine control room or ECR. So on board the ship, there is a boiler, boiler water indicator inside the engine control room so that the engineers can monitor the, the, the actual level indicator by observing this remote boiler water indicator wherein the engineers is doing the watch inside the control room. So, of course, there is a sensor. This one here. A differential pressure transmitter. It's a transmitter. So, it's a transmitter. Sensor here. Both the steam for steam and the, for the water are provided to indicate the current level in the drum at the remote position. So, the signal from here in the sensor both for the water level and for the steam level will be sent to your transmitter and the transmitter will send the electrical signal to the junction box and to the from the junction box to your uh, electronic boiler water indicator located in the remote position which is engine control room or sometimes there is also uh, this is also equipped with a uh, uh, other remote boiler water indicator uh, outside engine control room or ECR. So the other system also is here is the capillary capillary tube, but here in this case, this is supposedly uh, electrical electrical wire. So. This is the purpose of remote label indicator or the indirect reading boiler water indicator. So how much the reading here, the actual reading here, it will be transmitted by your, uh, through your sensor, sensor probe, water level sensor, differential sensor, transmitted through a pressure transmitter and through your uh, junction box on your to your uh, label indicator itself. So here the label here is in indicated by green uh, the water label and the uh, label here indicated by red is the the steam label. So this is your remote boiler water indicator. So, how to test the boiler remote water level indicator with burner firing? So, the same procedure on how to test your local boiler water indicator fitted on the boiler. But, the only difference here or the only difference is that you have to, in the local Boiler water indicator you have to observe at the boiler side uh, location and here at the remote water level indicator you have to observe at the engine control room. 
So first, uh, put feed pump selector switch to position. So at this time, this is equivalent to the uh, uh, pump interrupt switch. But here we use feed pump selector switch. So they are, they are uh, uh, equivalent. So we have to switch off to the opposition. She can open additional steam valve to consume the steam. So there are various valves for the consumers. So the engineers uh, uh, know about this, where to open the valves. So in order to, to consume more steam, that's why we have to open additional steam valve. Wait for the water level to go down, observing from the remote water level indicator located inside the control room. So, uh, the engineers or the engineer on watch will observe the water level indicator inside the control room because this is in the remote position. Observe if the water level go down, switch on again. <coughs> The pit pump to auto position, allowing the boiler water level to go up. Then observe if water level indicate to normal level. So the engineers continuously observe when the pump is running because of it is switched in auto position. If the water level will go up again to the normal position, and then if observe the system working properly, put back switch in normal working position. So if the working, if the water level will go up to normal position, that means there is no plug on the bulb as well as the pipe of your boiler water indicator. So you have to switch the the pit pump switch into normal working position again, which is in automatic mode. Note if this uh, boiler water indicator is electronic type, if the electronic remote water indicator label shows error reading, replace. It with new spare. So these are the components. These are your uh, remote boiler water indicator and the switch of your pump. But here, this is a pump interrupt switch. But in other system it is not uh, pitted with this component but pitted with the uh, here pit pump selector switch so if not pitted with pump interrupt switch pitted with pit pump selector switch this is common. This is common. Feed pump selector switch. So for the recap, I had discussed the following. The requirements for boiler water indicators for shapes boilers, which is our main uh, topic. The various types of local boiler water indicator indicators, the function of boiler water indicators, the construction of local boiler water indicators, the working principle of boiler water indicators, the maintenance of boiler gauge glass, the boiler gauge glass cleaning 
and blow down procedure testing of water indicators both direct and indirect readings so if you like this video please click the thumbs uh, thumbs up icon and please don't forget also to click sub subscribe button and click the bell down below and for my plan next video I will create a video which is important for the new marine engineers the new passers marine engineers and the new acting marine engineers and those who are also applying uh, for uh, the related position such as oilers, wipers and those who are cadets and students I will make a video which is uh, useful to you so for the oilers for the new engineers uh, I make video for your advanced learning and for sure I will impart knowledge uh, based on my actual experience as a chief engineer I will make video for you so uh, see to it that you will uh, subscribe click subscribe to my video down below click subscribe and click also uh, likes and click also subscribe and the bell button so this time uh, I will uh, say goodbye and see you on my next video thank you for watching on this video and thanks also for uh, for my subscribers